let me just put my list of a thousand notes on the screen. Close down this Google Earth that has Hawaii in the center of the Pacific Ocean. You should stop opening that. Like, I don't think that's good for you to keep looking at that. <laughs> Look, when you open up the map, it centers on where you are. And the answer is in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Why do you need Google Earth open all the time? I'm, I'm actually using it for a video that I'm working on. So uh, I, I, that's why I keep opening up Google Earth. And then it's like, hey, have you seen that Hawaii exists in the middle of the biggest expanse of nothing on the face yeah. of the Earth? Yes, Google Earth, I have seen that. I think about it all the time. So, you know, me and Stephen have a show on Genius, right? Mm -hmm. Wikipedia article things. We just did one about the uh, things called the spaceship graveyard, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which is this part in the Pacific Ocean where everybody just aims the satellites and rockets towards because it's so big and an expanse of nothingness that you can just put everything there and it's apparently quote-unquote fine they'll be fun for future alien archaeologists why do they put all these machines in the bottom of the ocean here or this is how you get to like an atlantis type thing yeah yeah why did this civilization have this underwater rocket launching pad where clearly there was a horrific <laughs> explosion <laughs> Good luck, alien archaeologists. It's in the South Pacific Ocean Uninhibited Area. Right. That's its full name. Or Spacecraft Cemetery. Much better. We have today probably the wildest time difference that we could have had and have definitely ever had. Yeah. We're two hours short of the maximum time difference. Oh, is that true? I think we're 10 hours off right now. Yeah. It's 11 a.m. for me, and it's... It's half past nine for me. We'll be, next time we record, because I will still be in Hawaii, yeah. and because Hawaii doesn't do daylight savings time, but the UK does, then we will be one hour off of the maximum difference that we could be. So we'll be 11 hours off next time. I didn't know that. Is that just because of, like, just the way that land masses are? Like, you would never be, no matter where you are, that, like, more than 12 hours or whatever? Is that... Is that the case? Yeah, that's 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 got it right. Am I am I doing that right? Yeah, that's, I have that's no the idea, man. <laughs> I've never I've never even thought about that before. I just figured like you could be anywhere within twenty four. Like yeah, but if you're within twenty four, you start getting closer because you're the other way, right? That's, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're less yeah. hours yeah. apart now because I get you're it. closer together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> that's why we're be, too. <laughs> yeah, you would never be like thirteen hours behind. Right. Or whatever it would be. Like, you you would then move the other direction. I get it now, yeah. Right, yeah. so I, th I think if, for the next recording, I think if you go to Romania, I'm going to guess, because I think they're an additional hour ahead. No, it's two. Okay, All right. If you were in Romania now, then, we would be the furthest away that we could possibly be. Yeah. But if you went any further east, you would start coming closer to me. So that's yeah. how that works. I will say as well, like, you are so far away physically and in time. <laughs> but it genuinely, to me, doesn't sound like you're any further. Like, I know why that is, but, like, it's just so fascinating to me sometimes. Like, you're so far away from me, but you could just tell me you were at home and I wouldn't know. Yeah. Like, just from having this conversation, this call. I mean, maybe when I get the audio back, I'll hear, like, some kind of wildlife behind you, which is always <laughs> a possibility. But, like, over this Skype call, like, it just it just sounds exactly the same. It's like, in my yeah. mind, I imagine there's going to be this, like, long delay. or like, <laughs> uh, But it's, it's just weird. It's just, like, a funny thing. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Internet. Hey, look, it's late for me right now. Maybe I'm a little loopy. I don't, <laughs> usually, I don't record podcasts this late anymore, which is a good thing in my life. I used to record podcasts this late a lot, mm -hmm. but not anymore. Yeah. Next time we record, you might hear mooing because there's cows that are right outside of my window, but they're not there today because there's currently a tropical storm warning mm -hmm. and there's 50 mile an hour winds outside my window. Yeah. So all of the cows are in some shelter somewhere else. Yeah. In true, like cortex fashion like there's never just one problem <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> that is like a real thing for us there is never <laughs> one problem for our recordings there's always like multiple problems now when you phrase it this way yeah it's like oh right yes the wind knocked out the internet a little bit this morning but also i had to go move a water trough away from an electric fence yeah. moments before starting recording right I'm like hold on a minute i'll be right back but it's the same <laughs> as when i was away right like oh yeah. i'm away i'm recording for a couple of hours i'm on a different time zone i don't have a good environment to record in i don't have good internet 
I'm going to Disneyland later on. Oh, and now I also need to get a COVID test. Like it was like, there's never <laughs> just like one thing. There's always like a staged amount of thing. But like, yeah, you had like great taxi today and he's like, so the internet's out now uh, because <laughs> it's a tropical storm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's all, it's all it's all good now, and it is the gift of the modern world that we can have a conversation, and it does just sound like oh, you could be down the street, yeah. and it doesn't sound like I'm talking to you through uh, like like a tin can on a string from the middle of the ocean, which is yeah. what it seems like it should sound like. So I have a follow up slash story for you. Mm-hmm. I condensed down to the one tech kit. Oh, okay. So if you remember last time, I had the the tech kit, the Bowray tech kit, and the Bowray pouch. Mm-hmm. And by removing the external battery from my tech kit, I was able to get all the cables that I needed. I will say that the Bellroy pouch was like fit to burst, but I got everything I need in it. Went in the bag, had more space in the backpack. Very happy. So the little extra pouch mm-hmm. and the battery they stayed at home. Everything in the one tech kit. I was very happy with that. Nice. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I got my own little tech kit just before this trip. And right. it was a great recommendation from you. Well, so good. I love it's it. It's nice, right? Yeah. Like I like the, the little um, elastic things to put all the cables in, all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. I, I made full use of it. So I was very happy with it. Yeah, no, it, it's it's perfect. Mine was also fit to burst because it had everything for me and my wife. But, uh, you yeah, know, that was, that was a well-timed recommendation uh, from you last time. But we mentioned that the universe Mm -hmm. plays tricks oh okay what happened mike the universe (laughs) played a trick on me did you need that battery in the end memphis has an airport called memphis international airport Mm -hmm. memphis flies nowhere internationally uh that's illegal no it has to fly somewhere internationally if it's an international airport fedex does no that's a little sneaky memphis it also used to when the mm-hmm. the, the uh, many years ago you could fly i think they fl- a route that went th- through amsterdam Schiphol. i think i think it was mm-hmm. like delta airlines delta airlines i think if i'm remembering my memphis history enough which i did realize recently outside of london i know more about memphis than anywhere else in the world it's just like <laughs> delta airlines used to use memphis as a hub they moved mm-hmm. to atlanta Right, okay. Which kind of screwed Memphis in a bunch of ways. But Memphis Airport, Memphis International Airport, flies nowhere internationally. Oh, yeah, it's huge. Okay, that makes sense why it used to be a hub. Yeah. I was like, of course, I was just looking it up. Like, look at all those runways. Yeah, that is a former hub. Mm -hmm. MEM, nice. I like that. That's good. So we always have to connect. Mm -hmm. Right, so this time uh, we were connecting through Dallas-Fort Worth. And we had a shorter connection time. I'm, a, you know, not nervous, nervous traveler. I've gotten way better over the over the years. But connections are a thing that I don't enjoy. I always feel like they're going to go wrong. I mean, this yeah. is probably in part like the first time that I went to America with my older brother when I was like 18. We missed our connecting flight because of a delay and had to stay over in a completely different place for over 12 hours and spent another 12 hours in an airport on standby. So like right. I've, I have had very bad experiences. Unpleasant. You know all about standby. You did that by choice. <laughs> yeah. And as someone who just went from Heathrow to Dulles to RDU to O'Hare to LAX to finally get to Hawaii, mm-hmm. I understand connections. Yeah. You did make some purposeful stop offs in the way, though, right? Like, that's not like one trip. Yes, but yeah. still. But still. It's too many connections. Yes, connections, you know? <laughs> so when we were booking our flights to get the price that I wanted, to come home, I was going to have a short connection, which is like, it was mm-hmm. like an hour and 20 minutes, which is, that's like an hour less than I like, you know? Yeah. Um, but the way I worked it out is, and this is how I tend to do things, I take a longer connection going to the place because I, if I'm going to be delayed, I prefer to be delayed coming home. Yeah, for sure. Because then, then it's not, it doesn't feel like it's time wasted or money wasted as such, right? So I felt like it could have been an issue, but we got off on time, so seemed like it wasn't going to be a problem and at one moment it felt like i felt like this was a short flight this was supposed to be a short flight and i wasn't really keeping track of it but it was like i've watched four episodes of mad men Mm -hmm. i was expecting to have watched Mm -hmm. like two this is meant Mm -hmm. to be like a 90 minute flight i was like i don't know whatever and then all of a sudden like you know ladies and gentlemen we've uh we've been circling above dallas for a while because there's some weather uh, we now have to divert because of there's like a storm over Dallas Airport. 
We're going to Tulsa, Oklahoma, which is not like close. It's another hour away. It's like yeah. pretty much the entire, like double the distance we've already gone. The Memphis to Dallas, I think is like 90 minutes. So we're going another hour away. Anywhere where you're leaving the state of Texas is yep. a long way. Yeah. yeah, we're going now to the state of Oklahoma. All right, we're, like, we're going, right? But we're off. And I'm like, two things are happening in my mind. One is we're not making that connecting flight. Like that's mm-hmm. not happening now. Two is, I knew it. I need the battery pack. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because what's going to happen to me now, you know? Uh, We land in Tulsa. We were on the tarmac in Tulsa for like two and a half hours or something. Maybe maybe three hours. Mm -hmm. What we knew at that point was no planes were leaving Dallas. So it was like, well, maybe we'll get back in time, right? Because all the planes are backing up, right, at Dallas. Mm -hmm. So we're sitting there and people keep coming on and off and on and off and we're waiting for refueling, right? We had to go because we were running out of fuel, right? So like we had to go to Tulsa. We couldn't keep circling DFW forever because we had no fuel in the plane. And it was just like one of those situations and then there's like a guy behind me was starting to have like an argument with the one of the air stewards because he wanted more alcohol and it was like, oh my God, what is going oh, on? You know, like mm-hmm. it just, it started to become one of those kinds of situations, right? Mm-hmm. And luckily, we were on a modern enough plane that it had USB ports on it. So I was able to charge my phone. So I was happy about that. But this is where that part of the story ends. And now I just want to tell you the story of what happened afterwards. So okay. the story ends now with Mike didn't need the battery because he could charge his phone. And the iPhone Max's battery is so good. It's like I just topped it up and I was good for however long it was going to take. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert, it took a really long time. <laughs> so everything gets taken care of and we're taxiing to leave Tulsa. We then get the notification from Flighty that our plane has left Dallas Fort Worth. So it's like, great. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen, and it's happened. Thanks, Flighty, for that little bit of news. Or like, genuinely, like, before I even got on the plane at Memphis, I thought, <laughs> I, I remember said it, I said it to Adina, I was like, I just want you to know, I reckon we will not make it home tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And this wasn't like, and I wasn't even worried about it. When we were in Tulsa, I was just calm. I figured that this might happen. I'm not upset about this. I'm not worried. I know we'll get home. We'll just work it out. Like, I've done this kind of stuff before. We'll just get a flight tomorrow. It's like, it's fine. Mm -hmm. And we leave. We arrive. And we go to the, like, the counter, right? And we go speak to the airline agent. And they're like, don't worry. Like, we will rebook you on another flight tomorrow. All the same stuff. Like, same time and all that. And then I was kind of like, okay. And they're like, okay. I'm like, wait, what then? Like, Adina's like, can we get our bags? He's like, no. (laughs) We're like, what? (laughs) It's like, no, you can't get the bags. I was like, okay, but the flight is like 24 hours from now. Uh And he's like, well, it would take us two hours to even find your bag. So we don't, we don't give you the bag. And I was like, okay. Oh. And he was like, okay. And I'm like, I actually said to him, because I was pretty upset at this point, are we just being released into the night? What happens now? (laughs) And he's like, basically, yes. Well, welcome to Tulsa. Get out of the airport. Well, no, we're in we're in Dallas now. Oh, you're right. You're in Dallas. Right. right, We're in Dallas now. (laughs) And it was kind of just like, oh, uh, what it was is we'd booked through our airline, our Mm. airline partners of another airline. Because of that, they would just give us nothing. But people that are on that airline, they got hotels paid for them taxis Mm -hmm. to the airport meal vouchers but it's like even though these airlines are in the same group they're just like you're not our customer so right off you go and it Mm -hmm. turns out they hadn't booked us on the flight Mm -hmm. it's just because adina happened to check like we had not been rebooked on the same flight we'd been booked on a complete different flight at a completely different time which wasn't good right like it was a flight that would have gotten us in uh, like a horrifically terrible time considering now I have to like explode my calendar. Oh, right. Yes. Because you've you've got all your recordings lined up when you come back. Recordings and like everyone's, you know, I have like people that have me in their schedule, right? Mm -hmm. So I've got to move everything around. So I can't arrive at just like a random terrible time. Like I booked the flight that I booked because I could sleep a little bit on the plane and then it helps me get back to life normally. So if I'm going to have to be delayed a day, 
I want to get the same flight so then I can get back at the time that I wanted, but just a day later and then deal with everything, right? But mm-hmm. getting a flight that gets me into London at like really late the evening before, it's just like a terrible way for yeah. me. I prefer to arrive home in the morning. And so like that's like a whole thing of like, I'm trying to arrange with everyone. Like, can we record this day? Can we record that day? You know, like it's just like a whole big mess, that kind of stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And then we're just like, okay, we have travel insurance. We're on our own. <laughs> We'll just go get a hotel and we'll deal with this later on. So we get to the airport the next day. We had a nice day in Dallas. We spent the day in Dallas. We had a nice brunch and bought some simple clothing because we had nothing. (laughs) Just like nothing. (laughs) No bags for you. And we get to the airport and can you confirm that our bags are going to be on the plane? And they're like, we're going to put a request through to have your bags transferred from airline A to airline B. They are airline B, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, what does that mean? It's like, oh, we just call them. And, it's like, and I was like, okay, can we get any kind of confirmation? And they're like, just check at the gate when you go to check in and they'll confirm that they're there. It's like, okay, so uh, okay. do the whole thing and we get to the gate and we're like, okay, can I check, like, you know, line up at the gate and go up say, so can I check that the bags on the plane? And the lady's like, I have more important things to deal with (laughs) than checking this. I was Uh like, I just want to know, like, can't you check it on the computer? And she's like, nope. If it's not there, you'll make a claim on the other end. Uh, I'm just like, what is happening right now? Like, why is this going on, right? Like, I know that you have a million things to do, but I feel like, I just feel like surely they know the bags on the aircraft. Because why else do they have tracking numbers on them, right? This is when I'm like, ah, we have air tags. Right. I, I was wondering right? about that for getting your bags. I was, I was like, can you give the person your phone to find a bag? Like, oh, it's going to take you two hours. I can do it in 10 minutes. <laughs> Sorry, this well, is it was more here. that like I could open it up and say, like, where uh-huh. is it? Right. And it turned out our bag was located at the gate mm-hmm. that we were at. So I'm like, all right, that seems pretty good. So I wanted to see, like, oh, when we get on the plane, right, Mm -hmm. will it update as we're moving away from the gate? Mm -hmm. I'm sending you a message here of a screenshot that I took, which was, to me, absolutely hilarious, which is as we have started to leave (laughs) and, like, we've taken off a little bit. This image is of us, like very far away from the airport and the bag just at the airport right like and i was like oh god and like and what it was is like there was no connection our bags were there waiting for us when we got home in london which was a fantastic moment when i opened my iphone opened mm-hmm. find my and my bag appeared in heathrow i was like yes like, I, I believed in you little bag i did not believe in the airline but i believed in you but there was just something to me that was just genuinely so funny about like checking my phone and being like the bag's over there, man. It's just left <laughs> it behind. is. It is. Yeah. Somehow the emoji looks extra sad. Like yep. that brown suitcase emoji is like, oh, goodbye, suitcase. It was just like a very <laughs> funny image to me of like, you're this far away from it. <laughs> goodbye. I do have to say the air tags are such a winner for traveling. Oh, like, fantastic. When you told me about that trick about just, oh, wait, to get the notification of like, your bag is nearby instead of standing with everyone for picking up the bag. It's like, that is... That alone is so, such a great use case of like, no, no, I'll just sit down. I don't need to stand around the bag carousel for 30 minutes waiting. Like, I'll just I'll just sit here and I'll get a little notification when it's nearby. It's, it is so good. Because I had an air tag, I ended up just like t- telling these people, like, I'm not going to bother asking questions of you anymore because I could see it was at the gate. So mm. I had more confidence that it was going to be loaded onto the plane because it was Mm -hmm. at our gate, right? Like I could see it on the map because otherwise I would have been like, I will not accept this as an answer. Like, can you at least look on your computer? Like you won't even do that. Mm -hmm. It was just like a really, the whole thing just ended up being like a really weird experience. It was just all very strange in the end. Mm -hmm. The universe did play a trick on me, which I did find endlessly amusing. Fate was tempted. Yeah, of course. That's what happens. I'm I'm glad you got out of it unscathed mainly. Mm. I'm glad you got back home. Are you over all of your knock-on calendar delays or are you still making up for that no i ended up getting that handled by the weekend basically it was just like a couple of things that were that could get cancelled got cancelled and it allowed for the movements to occur Mm. and then we moved our show recording time which helped 
a lot for me because I would have been wrecked because I that would have been the day after we got home. Right. We don't have to be polite about that. We moved the show because I completely forgot. Uh, <laughs> I, I just it totally blew past my brain. And then my wife notified me that people were trying to get in touch. And those people were Mike wanting to record a podcast. And I went... Oh, no. <laughs> I just needed to know you'd forgotten. That was all. And right. then I could go home. <laughs> and I had. I had forgotten. I'm sorry, Mike, but I'm, no problem, I'm glad it worked out for you. It's better for everyone. <laughs> I don't think I would have gotten through that recording. This episode of Cortex is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. You can stand out with a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything, your products, your services, even the content you create. Squarespace has got you covered. With Squarespace, you can get blogging. They have powerful blogging tools to share stories, photos, videos, and updates. You'll be able to categorize, share, and even schedule your posts to make your content work for you. You can sell your products in an online store. Whether you sell physical or digital products, Squarespace has all of the tools that you need to start selling online, and you can also use insights to grow your business. If you ever wondered where your site visits and sales are coming from and which channels are the most effective for you, well, you can analyze all of that in Squarespace. And once you've got that data, you can improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords or the most popular products and content that you have. Squarespace is incredible. I have been using Squarespace for 10 years now. And from where it started to where they are now, it really is incredible all of the stuff that you can do with Squarespace. It is a one-stop shop at this point. If you have something you want to put online, I guarantee you they've got the tools that you need to do it. And they really are just an amazing place to start. They make it so easy. There's so much you don't have to worry about. And they have fantastic customer support right there to help you too. If you go to squarespace.com slash cortex right now, you can sign up for a free trial with no credit card required. Then when you're ready to launch, use the offer code Cortex and you'll save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That is squarespace.com slash Cortex. And when you sign up, use the offer code Cortex and you'll get 10% off your first purchase and show your support for the show. Our thanks to Squarespace for the continued support of this show and all of Relay FM. How is the Minix plug? It's amazing. It's powering my laptop right now. Okay. And I've ended up ordering like five more of them because since i'm here in hawaii for two months i wasn't really thinking about what that means where you go oh i don't just need a charger for travel like i basically need to outfit the house with chargers wherever i want them and so it's been absolutely great having a little usb a port on it has is surprisingly handy for various random things that you need so they were so good i just ordered a bunch more and now i have them all around the place where we're staying so we have chargers where we need them so this is totally my new base for like everything in the charging system will work around this little device so all right, i'm gonna buy one then two thumbs up i absolutely love it really recommend it best little charger i have come across in years yeah i know what this will fit for me like it's going to replace the standard apple charger that i bring Mm -hmm. for like my for like my iphone or whatever because i'm Mm -hmm. not gonna as i mentioned before like i will keep the one oh man what is this the minute the 100 watt turbo that's gonna be huge though right uh that sounds bigger it's physically larger, but it has three USB-C ports and a USB-A port on it, Gray. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, 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 Minix is spoiling <laughs> us. Minix is rapidly expanding their business. They've gone from what sounded like a totally sketchy, who knows, manufactured where kind of bought off of Amazon thing. Still sounds sketchy to me. <laughs> I mean, this is why I didn't buy it without checking that you were happy with yours so far. Right, that there was no fire hazard or anything. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, I see what you mean there. Well, well, well. I will wait for the secondary review of that model. (laughs) But in the meantime, I'll get this little one. Because I want to keep the one for my MacBook Pro. Like, I I want to keep the the official big Apple one with the MagSafe and all that kind of stuff. But this will help me to charge, you know, as we mentioned, like the... Either an iPhone... Honestly, with this, I could do my iPhone, my Apple Watch, and an iPad. Like, I could just have all the cables plugged in and just swap them around depending on what I need. So, yeah, right. I'm going to get I'm going to pick up one of those ones. So I'm pleased that it's been going well for you so far. I'm literally placing my order for the big one now, and I will see it in April at some time because Hawaii. How has been Hawaii faring for you so far? How long have you been there? Uh... 
how long have I been here? I guess I've been here two weeks. Yeah. I don't I don't know. Um, it is quite alarming. I guess oh, it's two weeks today, actually, is how long I've been here. Yeah. No, Hawaii is uh in many ways exactly as I remember it. Warm and slightly sticky all the time. That's my main physical feeling about being in Hawaii. And I also had completely forgotten until I stepped off the uh, airplane that Hawaii definitely has a smell. I couldn't describe it to you, but... I love the smell of Hawaii. The air is sweet. It's like sweet leaves, I think, is maybe the best way I would mm-hmm. describe it. But yeah, I I did not have like the best of times the last time I was here and definitely felt a little triggered with that smell of like oh my god like you know the way like smells can just really trigger like (laughs) these these visceral memories (laughs) it's like the the door to the plane opens up right on on the tarmac as you do in hawaii and the air comes rushing in and it's it's like oh it's just just like all of these flashbacks were happening of like oh right the smell i forgot it has the smell and my wife is going oh it smells like home right and like she's bursting mm-hmm. into tears with joy and i'm like ah hawaii we meet again <laughs> <laughs> oh it's so funny to me this is one of my favorite things about you is how you do not enjoy this place that everybody else that i know including me is like this paradise i know I, it's just I, something yeah. really funny about it I, I i get it like i understand that it's funny this is also one of these things where it's like i feel compelled to try to explain but i also know that my explaining is completely ineffective on everyone everyone's like you can't explain away this beautiful paradise right when talking to people i feel like i've told them oh i've gone on a trip to heaven and i don't like it that much and people are like what are you crazy tropical islands not hawaii in particular but just like the tropics are not a place that i would choose to spend my time just because i always just do feel like physically too warm and too uncomfortable and i find it extra annoying when everybody else is telling you like oh the weather is so beautiful and it's like i can feel this layer of sweat on my skin and like there's only so many showers that you can take in a day to try to get rid of it but everyone else oh it's it's absolutely lovely today but the main thing for me is (sighs) I always know how this sounds when people say this, but there is the resort Hawaii, and then there is the real Hawaii. And so when I come here, I am not living on resort Hawaii. I am living in the real Hawaii, which is far away from resort land. And I feel like some of the things that I find difficult to deal with are greatly magnified in real Hawaii. and. The main thing for me is like, it's a place where you, where you really feel like you are at constant battle with nature. You constantly have to think about keeping the nature out of the house. And if you are not eternally vigilant about that, the nature will be in the house and will really ruin your day. Okay. You can even see it when you're flying into Hawaii. You can see where the resorts are because they actually look like islands on the islands. Like they don't look like the surrounding territory. Depending on which resorts you're going to, like if it's a resort on one of the dry sides of one of the islands, it's like lush and manicured. And if it's a resort on one of the wet sides of the island, you can also see that it just physically looks different. And one of the things that is happening there is that the resorts maintain an army of gardeners to try to keep everything nice and manicured and not horrifying. But if you're living somewhere where you don't have an army of gardeners to say, I don't know, sweep the spiders off of everything, you know what you will end up with? Spiders on everything. Oh, I hate it. I, this has not been my experience. So this is why, like, I am very happy that you enjoy Hawaii when you come. Yeah. But, like, I'm also very aware that you are staying in places where they have employees whose entire job is get rid of all the spiders. I wish you so stop saying So people come it. back. Please stop saying <laughs> Can you just say it something else now instead of that exact phrase? But, Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, I know, like, I'm, I'm, I am vacationing in 
when I go to this place, right? And right. You are, and this is like I've I've been in places in Europe where it's like this. Wherever there is like yes, exactly resorts by the beach or whatever, it's totally different. Stop sending me images. <laughs> Stop it. I'm still getting all these notifications, and all I can see is, is spider webs. I'm not into this. Stop that. This is cyberbullying, what you're doing to me right now. Here's the, here's the thing. I just needed to send Mike two images, and I need to send these like for my own sanity. Because people don't believe me when I say, I will not leave the house if the sun is not up. Like, that's just the rule. I am not going outside when the sun is not up because you cannot see what is out there. Mm. And so when I, when I say a phrase like, oh, I'm in Hawaii, and people go, that's lovely. You say, yes, I am in the real Hawaii, the very, very rural Hawaii that is very far away from any of these resorts. And the building is covered in spiders. And people go oh, you must be exaggerating. And it's like, no, no, no. I have taken photos. Yeah, the I photos now, that I have I taken... I agree with what you said, because I did look. I felt right? like you sent me them. I needed to look, right? Because there was the, there's a point here. You're trying to get someone to advocate for you here. And I can now advocate for what Gray has just said. People don't understand what it means when I say covered in spiders. And it's like, those photos that I have sent you, I only took those because those are the ones where you can clearly see the web against the sky mm. but the whole building is covered in spiders right Please. It's like <laughs> we get it now <laughs> killing me here <laughs> right but like but so this is my own permanent torture though is because since my wife grew up here right she's a local girl she's just totally oblivious to all of these things that are like my constant nightmare yeah. and I, ma I made some comment about the spiders and she's like I guess there are some spiders. It's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like more than I've seen in my entire life, like on this building. <laughs> I think some of the stuff that you're saying, anybody that has a partner who grew up in a different place to them can understand. Oh, yes. Mike. The problem for you is your partner grew up in a place that is universally known as a paradise. Yes. That's your exactly. issue, right? And yeah. it's like, well, of course she doesn't live in that part, right? Like, because nobody does. No one lives mm -hmm. in the resort towns. Nobody lives there. Yeah. Everyone travels in to the resort towns, mm -hmm. works in the resorts, and leaves. Yeah, that's exactly what her parents do. Like, they yeah. commute into the resort, they do their resort-related jobs, and then they commute back. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, like, the resorts are just a totally different sort of space than mm -hmm. the whole rest of the island. Yeah. So I have this funny feeling of, like, I've been trying to explain this thing where I'm thinking about, like, neural nets that are used to identify images, right? Like iPhoto does. This is a dog. This is a person's face. Even the cool stuff they're doing in maps, like this is this exact building. You train neural nets to recognize objects and images. Without a doubt, some very significant portion of my brain has been set aside now to train constantly on recognize the slight shimmer in the sunlight of a spider web <laughs> between any two objects that are closer than eight feet together. When I say any two objects that are closer than eight feet together, I mean any two trees. Keep in mind, this is a tropical jungle on one side of the house. Mm -hmm. Any two buildings, like there is without a doubt some part of my brain which is hyper alert to like exactly the way a spider strand will look in the sunlight. And now like I've never thought about how many objects are closer than eight feet together. And now I can identify every single one of them as I'm walking around because like 30% of my brain is devoted to this task of don't walk into one of these webs that feel like they're made of steel and have a spider the size of your fist in the center of them. <laughs> it's like, Why that do you is have a bad to keep day. describing this? In front. <laughs> you didn't need that part, you know? All I want to say to Cortexans... <laughs> be look, look, everyone believes you now, all right? Cortexans, if you are uncontrollably itching right now, know that I'm with you, right? This is not what I want. 
at the moment at the, um, <laughs> okay. during the show. <laughs> but as you have heard me multiple times, I cannot get him to stop. <laughs> Okay, okay. But listen, all right, I'll, I'll stop with the spiders, right? Because my wife, none of her family, none of the local, nobody even mentions the spiders. Whenever I mention them, they're like, oh, I guess there's a lot of, it's like, don't they don't even see them. Because what they're concerned with are the centipedes, right? Which all is right, also look, extremely I... alarming. <laughs> all of this now, we can just, let's just go back to calling this the nature <laughs> the right? nature right i i preferred that i feel i feel like i entered the, i go what could you mean i wish i would never have done that <laughs> right well i have definitely uh had to kill three of the natures then mm-hmm. that were longer and thicker than my fingers in the house which were just waiting to bite me with their hundred nature legs and All right. <laughs> it's so alarming when people are like oh this is what the natives are worried about they're worried about all of these centipedes and like oh my god please don't let one of them bite me but i just know i just know that i'm destined to this what happens if if they bite you like is that bad so here's here's the thing from my perspective there's so much to worry about here like we haven't even discussed the jellyfish but at least i can avoid them because it's like well i'm just not going in the ocean jellyfish fish i'm good to talk about they don't creep like, me out but, but that's avoidable right you go oh yeah the sea it's filled with lovecraftian monsters well you know just don't go in there great problem solved well the way to avoid the spiders and the centipedes is just to go in the sea <laughs> <laughs> that's how you do that go in the sea and there's none in there <laughs> yeah that's oh my god um or the ocean i should say right yeah yeah no it's not the sea uh what is wait, hold on a second i have to just my my sister-in-law was just telling me about some other thing that i'd never even heard of in the ocean last night oh yeah they're called nuda branches um but it's like what? oh th- yeah i know it's n-u-d-i-b-r-a-n-c-h they're these like sea slug mollusks yeah but th- but there are a specific branch of them that are hyper colored because as you know, when something in nature has lots of bright colors, it means it can hurt you quite a lot. And she was just like, oh, yeah, I was swimming in the ocean and, and a bunch of these things just went by. And, oh, they eat Portuguese man of wars and collect all of the poison in their horns. So I made sure not to touch them. And I was like, oh, my God. So everyone I know, they're unconcerned about everything except the centipedes. And they're like, oh, you really don't want a centipede to bite you. It's like, oh, my God. Right. So it just makes it a 100 times more alarming. Mm. From my perspective, everything is horrifying. But there's the one thing that people are really worried about. And we've already had to get rid of a few of them in the house. Can we talk about jellyfish now? <laughs> I would like to talk about jellyfish instead. But but Please. so like, this is what I mean. This is what I mean by like the nature and when you're in a place where it, it really is. It's just a tropical jungle on, well, where we are, it's slightly complicated. But there's like a jungle on one side and all of the things in the jungle want to come out and get you. So there's the big obvious stuff to worry about. There's... The small constant annoyance of being like just a little too warm and a little too sweaty. And then on the very mild side of the nature, but just like stuff I never normally have to think about is you just can't leave any kind of food out for any length of time. Mm. And that means you can't throw food into the garbage, like which is something I just never think about in London. It's like, oh, no, you can't just throw these shavings from this cooked meal into the garbage because it will be a hive of ants in the morning and it's like so there's just so many things i feel like you have to constantly be really aware of is there big nature uh i mean well there's the cows the cows i love the ca- cows get two thumbs up yeah, from cows me cows are not a problem like that really yeah the cows are fine yeah because i guess there aren't predators there's no bears yeah we do have like there's mongoose around so we've seen a few of them there's wild pigs that can get real ornery if you're in their way but you know most of that stuff is fine like the bigger stuff the bigger stuff i feel like at least like okay fellow mammal i have some concept of you Uh, you know it's it would be unpleasant to get into a tussle right but it's but it wouldn't be like oh 
Shelob's many eyes are upon you in the jungle, and you don't even know when she's reaching out her pincers to bite you. Don't right? like, like that's give so me much some worse. Lord of the Rings thing or some nonsense <laughs> and think I don't know what you're talking about. All right, I, I can give you a Lolth reference instead if you would prefer that. But yes. yeah, because I don't know what that is. But yeah, so like, there, there's big stuff. There's big stuff that's around, but it's it's all like. It's all the arthropods, right? That's the whole family of great concern here is like mm. all of those sorts of creatures. As I also just discovered last night, there's also scorpions on Hawaii, but I've never actually run across one of those. I didn't huh. know that they had those here, but that's, hey, you'd that know, I could though. also add to the list. If you ran across one of those, you'd know. <laughs> it would let you yeah. know. <laughs> well, this this came up in conversation because I was reading the Wikipedia article about centipedes. And I was like, well, how much is it going to hurt Wikipedia? Like, give it to me straight. And so Wikipedia goes, oh, it hurts as much as a scorpion. I was like, Whoa, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, I have no frame of reference for how much a scorpion hurts. Like, uh, Neither do I. I just imagine it's a lot. Yeah. You know? They look mean, so I, I assume it's a lot too. Yeah. And then Wikipedia's other frame of reference was scorpion or a snake bite. And I'm like, okay, okay, that is definitely bad news. That is way harsher than I would have expected from yes. the old centipede there. Yeah, but that's why it makes sense that people are like, you really don't you really don't want to get stung by the centipedes. Mm. And they come out at night. And so I guess I can I can summarize all of this in that my perspective on Hawaii is it's the kind of place where you really just don't want to sit on a toilet without thoroughly inspecting it first for many reasons. Do you think we have anybody listening to the show? Anymore? Do you think there's anyone left? It's like, I can't get away from it. Outside of me, is anybody else still listening? I don't know. I do, like, Mike, I, I genuinely, I feel bad for you because you are my captive recipient of someone who will listen because no one will listen to me here. <laughs> hey, look, it's making me incredibly uncomfortable, but I feel like you need this, so I will provide this to you. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, it is beautiful if in a real like nature doesn't love her children kind of way and don't think about the abyss of the ocean but it is beautiful even when there's storms then there's gorgeous rainbows they are the hawaiian islands like i like i understand the environment that i'm in no i feel like this is your counterattack to anybody that ever says to you why don't you love hawaii and i know i have been one of these people so i am now i've now got my penance for that yeah. Again, there's like this funny distinction between the real Hawaii and the resort Hawaii. And I think one of the other funny things that people just don't think about is how incredibly rural most of the islands are. Because again, like when you're driving around, you're in the resorts. So there's like a bunch of people there. Or you're in the areas that are just, there's nothing here, but it's beautiful, right? So you're in the lava areas. Then if you, you drive into the parts where you're like, oh, I'm passing through a small town... And you sort of think in your head that the town is bigger than it is, because what you don't realize is all of the houses in the town are on this road because there's just not very many roads. So I, like I'm currently in one of those small towns on the island where mm. someone could drive through and go like, oh, it's a town. And I, and I would go like, no, 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 you've seen all the houses on the street. This is the entirety of it. Like it's not any bigger than this. And so on one side is the jungle, and then on the opposite side from where we are is just an enormous amount of rural agricultural land. Just cattle grazing as far as the eye can see. People are always quite shocked to discover that I think it's in the top three largest, but like one of the three largest cattle ranches in America is in Hawaii. Hmm. And it's like, we're not near that one. But it's like, man, if you exclude Oahu, it's like Hawaii's got two things. They've got resorts and they've got endless agriculture of all kinds all over the place. So Oahu is where Honolulu is, right? Yeah, that's why I'm saying like you exclude yeah. Oahu because it's Honolulu and it's also the military bases. So there's uh, obviously right, like yeah. a lot of economic activity there. Yeah. But if you just if you take out the island of Oahu, the rest of the state is is very, very rural, very, very low population density. It's a funny experience, especially like exactly where we are with the jungle on one side, but then on the opposite side, it's just 
ranch land. Like it's very it's very weird. Like if I look out the back, it looks like I'm in one place, and if I look out the front, it looks like I'm in a completely other place. But as far as the big animals go, my wife and I have basically adopted some of the cows oh, <laughs> who nice. swing by. So any good names? Yeah. Well, I have. Um, I, I think I've told you this like this memorization system to help you memorize words and numbers where you can translate numbers into words and words into numbers based on sounds. So all of the cows have like a number tag on their ear. And so I've been using the number tags to come up with names for the different cows. That's what we've been doing. But yes, I don't know. There's like a couple dozen who come around regularly now because they know that we're the suckers who will give them convenient water to drink and lemons to eat. And then we get to know the cows. And so that's one of the things I've been doing during the days. And again, not today because it's too windy, but... Normally in my office, my window looks right, like six feet away, right into where all the cows are. And if they see me here and they are out of water, they will moo at me until I go get them some water, which is adorable. And I don't mind doing it. So I might need to take a break from the podcast to do that. See how you feel about that in six weeks. We'll we'll find out. I guess they have to make it through the wind. (laughs) How desperately do they want the water? I predict in six weeks, I will still be very happy to water the cows. This episode of Cortex is brought to you by FitBod. Between balancing work, family, and just about everything else you've got going on in your life, it can be really hard to make fitness a priority. So what you need is a program that's going to work with you, not against you. That is why you need FitBod. FitBod's algorithm learns about you, your goals, and training ability to craft a personalized exercise plan that is unique to you. Because personal fitness isn't about just competing with other people. You don't want to have to look to other people stack up against them, do what they're doing. You don't want that. What you need is something that works for you because when you have something that is made for you and it works for you, that is when it sticks. That's when you're going to get the results that you're looking for. This is why FitBod uses data to create and adjust your dynamic fitness plan. You have instant access to your own personalized routine in their fantastic app so you can make progress on your goals from anywhere. And their app makes it incredibly easy to learn exactly how to perform each exercise. That is my personal favorite thing. Everything's explained really well, but best of all, they have the videos. There are videos now as well from multiple angles. So every time I'm learning an exercise that's new in FitBod, I have it right there in front of me. It helps teach it to me and then I can remember it for next time but if I ever need a refresher just take a look it's right there everybody's fitness path is different which is why FitBod does so much work to make sure they customize things exactly to suit you they make sure to learn from your last workout so your next will be even better whether you work out twice a day or twice a week and FitBod even tracks your muscle recovery to make sure your plan is balanced with a variety of exercises to make sure you're not overworking anything this part I really love The FitBot app is incredibly easy to use. It got a great new design recently. It also integrates with your Apple Watch, Wear OS smartwatch, and apps like Strava, Fitbit, and Apple Health. Personalized training of this quality can be really expensive, but FitBot is just $12.99 a month or $79.99 a year. But you can get 25% off your membership by signing up right now at fitbod.me slash cortex. So go now and get a customized fitness plan for yourself today at fitbod.me slash cortex and you'll get 25% off your membership. That is fitbod.me slash cortex for 25% off. A thanks to FitBod for their support of this show and Relay FM. So you mentioned the office. How are you maintaining a work schedule? How successful have you been so far? Yeah, well, I mean, so far, I would say moderately successful but that is largely down to just the first week is the terrible time zone shift the way things are working right now you know what i need i need to cl- i've got the wikipedia article for anuda branches open on my computer i need to just stop looking at that and close that i don't think you should be looking at any <laughs> wikipedia articles for these right. things to be honest <laughs> let me close this map of hawaii let me close Why my is spider the map pictures. open again why do you keep doing this it just it just keeps opening <laughs> Let me close the spider pictures. Let me get rid of the question of of how do you rate insect pain. Let me get rid of all of these things and just talk to you like a normal person. Oh, uh, look, your cursor just popped back up in Google Docs again. So we're, we're back. You've stepped back into the podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 interesting because I'm here for just so long. Like it, it is really important to me to try to establish some kind of work schedule. And so also since we're living with family, like currently it's not full but when the house is full i think oh god i'd have to double check the whole rota that's been made but i think we're gonna have eight 
family members living with mm. us at once. So it's like a house full of people and nature. So lots of living creatures in the house. Um, <laughs> but what I have worked out, which has gone well this week, is I've set a rule. I'm making sure everyone in the family understands this ironclad rule. The rule is Gray is not to be disturbed before 1 p.m. It doesn't matter what it is. If there's a problem with the chickens, if there is any kind of other business going on, doesn't matter. Gray it has an office here. He will be in that room, and that room will not be disturbed until 1 p.m. If he exits the room and he's wearing his big headphones on, he will be trying very hard to pay no attention to whatever may be happening outside. He's just getting <laughs> some coffee and going back, and please don't interact it's with like him. like everyone's got a chair, and they're aiming it at one of the nature in the middle of the room. <laughs> like, I don't want to know. Like, I don't want to know. know, right? Like, look, <laughs> <laughs> one of the cows has escaped. I don't know, right? This has been uh, like a giant jar of honey spilled, whatever. <laughs> I don't need to know about any of this. And I have to say, everyone's been very good so far. I'm still waiting until the maximum number of people are here. But so far, the rule has held well for week two of working. Cool. And my feeling on this was basically, uh, again, this is a trip to see family, but I also simply cannot take two weeks to just like not work at all that's like it's just way too long of a time so i feel like this is a good use of the 80 20 rule of i would get 80 percent of my work done before 1 p.m anyway and so then it's like okay i'm available in the afternoons and i'm around for other family stuff and i have gotten the best 80 percent of the work done and then i can also be You're just not going to do the other 20 right yeah, like, exactly. You're just not going to do it. Yeah. Like, I know that there's like things that we normally do. Like, we, we might have some Cortex brand meetings or whatever, and we're just like postponing them or like squeezing yeah, them exactly. into our calls here. It's just like there's this deep that the, the parts that can be condensed just condense them. Yes, you know? exactly. Yeah. I, I could, that, that's somewhat similar to when, you know, I was out in Memphis and was just trying to remove as many things that can be removed. And then just have other stuff, just I'll deal with it when I get home again, you know? Yeah. So it's a, it's a very similar idea. Thinking of it as like the 80-20 is actually a really nice way mm -hmm. to put it. Where it's like there is stuff in my work day that I'll get to every day that either A, doesn't need to necessarily be done, but I'm doing it. Or B, mm -hmm. is like the the time that I don't track, right? Where like, you know, I've been at the studio today. It's uh, half past 10 now. I've been here for 10 hours mm -hmm. and up to now I have tracked five and a half hours of work time because I was hanging out Yeah, and I don't track that or I'm just like I'm on social media or I'm doing, you know, like it's so like I'm just doing stuff and I just don't track it, right? But like that kind of stuff falls into my work day every day where right? it's like exactly. I'm checking email but like not really getting into it or like maybe I'm having a call or maybe I'm talking to somebody over Slack or maybe I'm reading something or like what, but, but like it's not like work, work. And so like mm -hmm. I might have like an hour or two of that a day on most days. But like the reason there's is way more of it today because we've started recording so late right like i would have gone home you know like yeah I, exactly I stuck around but it's more to the point of like i can have these stretches in the day every day where it's like there's just busy work happening that i don't really track like because i kind of track when i'm actively working on a project mm -hmm. and i can when i'm traveling i can just take those hours out of the day yeah i'm also thinking of the 80 20 rule in the reverse because again i am doing a bunch of traveling this year and one of my real targets for like what consistently causes me problems is mm. not being able to work well while traveling so i feel like this is one of my little sub goals for the year of i really want to try to actually be able to consistently get some work done while traveling instead of no work done and so that's why i'm thinking about in hawaii i'm aiming for this oh i should be able to get 80 percent of the work done before 1 p.m but I also think for some of the other trips that I'm going to be doing, it's actually useful to think about the reverse of like 20% of your work is also the 80% most important. 
And so for yeah. busier travel periods, it's like, if I could just keep doing, not trying to hit 80% of my work, but only trying to hit 20% of the, of the work, but actually hitting the most important things, I would still consider that like a, a great improvement compared to traveling that I've done in the past. So yeah, that was actually the way I was thinking about it. Mm-hmm. Of like the importance, not the amount. Yeah. 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 It's it's like it's just a it's a useful metric to kind of think in both ways and yeah. just always always be aware of this kind of stuff. For some of my uh future traveling things, I'm I'm really gonna be aiming more towards like, oh, if I can just have two solid hours a day of writing while I'm still traveling, like that would be a like such an improvement over zero uh, hours of quality writing while traveling. So that's kind of what I'm aiming for some of the other stuff. Because I think me and you from a travel perspective, we're coming at this slightly differently, right? Because I know for you, you mm-hmm. just figure when you're traveling, you won't have as much time to be uninterrupted. So you want to focus yeah. on it. And if you're going to be expecting to travel more, you need to get used to that. Where for me, I'm expecting to travel less Mm -hmm. so when i am traveling i want to make the most of the travel Mm -hmm. so therefore want to give up the least amount of time possible right like i don't want to give up hours and hours every day to do this stuff right like to do whatever it is i've got to do for work so i'm trying to maximize time when traveling because i am actively attempting to do less of it yeah, for sure. And yeah, I, I don't know, just thinking about the upcoming year, I do have more travel planned and all of my Hawaii complaints aside, it does feel like, oh, it's really nice to have experiences again. Uh, yeah, that's, definitely. You know, I, I visited my parents earlier and that felt like a real trial run for, hey, is it fine to travel again at all? And like that went fine. And now this trip to Hawaii uh, it's like, boy, have I experienced things. And it's just, it's nice. It's nice to to yeah. have that again. And so as dumb as it sounds, there is a little bit of mentally reworking like, oh, okay, I've got to think about mixing work with experiences that happen out in the world uh, because you're doing things. It's like, yeah. oh, I went to the movies with family yesterday. It's like, oh, right, that's an experience that I haven't had in a really long time. I didn't want to go to the movies. I thought I would never have to do that again after COVID. But it's like, hey, it was still great to do something. Yep. So yeah, it's just nice to have that. But I am I am being aware of thinking about how to make sure I keep up with the work over the course of the upcoming year with all of that stuff. Yeah, look, when we were in Memphis, we went to a movie and we went to a basketball game. It's like, oh my God, these are like events. <laughs> right. <laughs> these are like things to do. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool, actually. So when I get bit by a centipede, oh, geez. that'll be a new experience too. So how'd it go with seeing Steven in Memphis? I haven't actually heard anything about this trip. Oh, it was so good, man. Yeah? Yeah, it was really great. I mean, just from a personal level was just really important, you know? Like, mm-hmm. I hadn't seen him in so long, and it just felt really good for our friendship to spend mm-hmm. time together. Because we've just been co-workers, mostly, for the last couple of years, and we haven't actually had that time together. And I don't think it was something that I'd realized. We'd gotten so deep in work, right, that I think we needed to have that time together to like have a friendship time too you know Mm -hmm. so that was nice that was i i enjoyed that that was my favorite part of the whole trip and we didn't really do much work and i think at one point he was like we haven't really done any work i'm like i don't wanna you know (laughs) it was just like (laughs) i'm just enjoying this i mean plus the start of the week there was an apple event so that was like a whole thing we had to deal with but that was fun though actually like we watched the event together Mm -hmm. did a couple of shows together about it like that was a whole fun thing from a work perspective it did remind me of something that i do consider important for me which is in-person meetings Mm -hmm. they don't always need to be that way but there's going to be a few things every year where being able to meet with person i work with to talk about big stuff is important yeah being able to do big picture things for me like having time together really helps like you can be more focused because you're in front of each other less distracted by things that are going on right and you know it's like an extended period of time that you can spend with someone so you have the ability to let your brain i think work through bigger things or like an idea pops into your head and you can just share it in that moment because that person's there you know it's just something me and steven had always done 
was mm-hmm. get together at least once a year and just focus on this kind of stuff, like bigger picture stuff. We've had a couple of things that we've been kind of bubbling around for a while, some areas that we want to put more focus in. Mm-hmm. And it kind of wasn't until we got together that we realized two kind of key parts about it, that one, these two things are actually really connected in a way that we hadn't considered. And also that we should probably hire someone to do it. Mm-hmm. And so we we just hadn't thought of this at all. It was like, oh, okay, we'll just work this out together, right? Like, we'll just find a way to do it. We'll fit it into what we're already doing. And realizing that, no, maybe we need someone who's actually got skills. So we're still working out the details. We're a small company adding people in, even on, like, part-time, you know, even as contract basis. with stuff we have to work out, right? Like, how are we going to make that work, et cetera, et cetera. But... It's sometime in 2022, I think we're going to expand the team again. Hmm. We wouldn't have come to this without having spent like, you know, an afternoon, just the two of us just talking about the business Mm. because we have a meeting every Monday where we talk about things. And we had a meeting, like a call a month or two ago, which was like our goals for the year call. And we like went through it all and we spoke about the things that we wanted to change as a company and we spoke about these areas we wanted to improve upon and didn't cross our mind that maybe we should hire someone for it you know i am the world's most resistant person to this idea but like this this whole this whole time has actually really demonstrated the value of in person meetings like it is just different. It's fundamentally different to be in a room and talk with someone. Yeah. Like, I'm doubtful of the way that many companies pitch this as like, oh, the magic happens in this meeting. Like, we can have a great meeting and get everyone together. But it really is important to actually just spend time in person with someone. Yeah. It's It sounds dumb. It's almost shocking how different it is. Well, the problem is, is like a lot of companies, they oversell it as a thing that is every day. <laughs> yes, like yeah. us being together every day, having every right. meeting in person is the only way work gets done. And that's just not true. But yeah. there are maybe big things, big picture things that for some people, it will help them to be in the same place. And I know that, that it is that way for me. Like, and we, me and you have it, right? Like mm-hmm. whenever we meet up for lunch or whatever, we talk about business, we always end up in places that we never would end up in if we're just sitting and talking. Yeah, it's completely different. Yeah. One of the things that's nice about in-person, especially over a length of time, like an entire afternoon or a couple of days, is you can more naturally do the thing where you sort of mention an idea and then circle back to it later in the conversation mm-hmm. a couple of times and, and develop. It's just... I don't know. It's just harder to do that in a call or especially with FaceTime. It just, I don't know. It, it, it feels like somehow there always has to be like, this is the topic that we're discussing now. And we're slightly taking turns each person, you know, especially with like the delays over Zoom calls. It's like each person sort of has to monologue for a minute and be like, I am the person talking now. And then mm-hmm. the next person talks. And it just makes it harder to like bring back up things in a way where it feels like oh we're developing this idea each time it flows back into the conversation over the course of an afternoon or over the course of a week yeah it's it's surprising how valuable that is to do you know i do have this feeling like audio calls can be difficult because it's too easy to get distracted Mm -hmm. i think video calls are complicated i I saw somebody say this once i don't know if there's truth to it but i believe it that like the preview of yourself makes you feel like you're performing oh yeah yeah no the preview of yourself is awful i I, I really think it makes the calls so much worse because you can see you and so like you're trying to like talk to the person but also not look stupid i don't know right like but this is like a thing that we don't normally have in regular conversation like it would be Mm -hmm. super weird like you know if i was talking to you and you put a little mirror on the desk i would just like to see how my face looks while i'm talking to you do you mind if i put this mirror next to you well if you put it and aimed it at me right like (laughs) (laughs) you know like here you go while you're talking to me there's this, this this little version of you just in the corner it would be completely bizarre and i think it's just it's impossible for my monkeys not to then think about themselves in the background constantly when they're looking at themselves in that way like Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter who you are it's just completely impossible and it is funny with like some people who i do facetime with 
They're definitely way more on the extreme of unable to look away from their own image. And it's very funny. Like, there's a couple of people where I FaceTime. It's like, I know that you're just looking at the photo of you 100% of the time. Like, I can see that you're doing it. It's very funny. (laughs) I don't know why we're doing this as a FaceTime call. (laughs) For a bunch of reasons, FaceTime is just more exhausting like i I way prefer an audio call over a facetime call for these sorts of things because i I just think the facetime stuff is really exhausting in in a way that an audio call isn't but yeah they're both not as good it's just actually being in the same room with a person yep i agree completely but i'm really glad that you got to go to memphis and that you guys finally got your co-founder time together like that was just so overdue and I'm, i'm glad to hear that some things have come out of it This episode of Cortex is brought to you by our wonderful friends at Memberful. Memberful is the easiest way to sell memberships to your audience used by the biggest creators on the web, so you can generate sustainable recurring income while diversifying your revenue stream. You will have heard us talk about Mortex on the show. Mortex is part of the Relay FM membership program, which is powered by Memberful. They are the platform that we chose years ago to set up our own membership program with because they make it incredibly easy for us to deliver bonus content to our members, generate that extra revenue stream, and stay on top of everything. One of the things we love about Memberful is how easy it is to integrate them with our system for us to keep our branding so it's something that you're used to seeing when you go there to check out. I love all of the options that they have for checking out, stuff like Apple Pay, for example. We really love that. And I love their integrations. We have a wonderful Discord for Relay FM members, and that is so easy to manage because of the integration that Memberful has with Discord. Maybe you're already producing content and relying on advertising or some other means of income. Memberful makes it incredibly easy to diversify this with everything you need to run a membership program of your own, including that custom branding, gift subscriptions, Apple Pay, free trials, private podcast feeds, and tons more. Still, while leaving you with full control and ownership of everything that relates to your audience brand and your membership program. You can even send paid email newsletters directly through Memberful without needing to connect a third-party email provider. There's no additional fee when you sign up for one of Memberful's pro or premium plans, and you can even publish your paid newsletter content to a Memberful-hosted members-only website. If you are a content creator, Memberful can help you monetize that passion. Get started for free at memberful.com slash Cortex with no credit card required. That's memberful.com slash Cortex. Go there now and check it out. It could be the start of something exciting. Our thanks to Memberful for their support of this show and Relay FM. It is impossible for me to describe how much I hate email. (laughs) Not just, like, it's the terrible email that I get and how impossible Mm -hmm. it is for me to escape from it because of my job. You're tied to the wheel. I want to give you an idea of what I'm talking about here, right? So on any given day, I could get, like, say, 50 to 60 emails, right? All right. This is not including junk mail or whatever, right? Like This is, like... 50 to 60 emails that hit my inbox. So like emails written by a person to you in particular. That's what you're talking about. Asterisk, but yes. Okay. The problem with these emails is around 25% of these emails are PR pitches Mm -hmm. and sales pitches Mm -hmm. that I never want anything to deal with, ever. (laughs) Right. Okay. These are people that have gotten my email address from scraping the Apple Podcast directory or something. Mm -hmm. And they're like, this person would be great for your podcast. Right. Hey, Mike and Gray. Wouldn't you love to interview person? (laughs) They would be a fantastic guest for you. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, not only discounting the fact that you haven't even done the minimum amount of research gathering to realize Mm. that we have never had a guest on the show. But like that is giving too much credit to these people, right? Mm -hmm. Because they don't care. Like it's not, they're just scraping and they're just sending these emails out. Mm -hmm. Like a bunch of them are like just terrible sales pitches for things that I don't want. Like I had a company email me today that wants to do like um, invoice financing. Are you familiar with this idea? Like I don't know what that is. So they would sit between us and our sponsors okay they would pay us immediately and then chase the sponsors oh, but then okay. they take like 10 percent of the money and it's like this is a company set up specifically to do this for podcasting it's like why does this company exist right like that's such a niche like why do you, who needs that you know 
Like, I, I just st- start nonsense like this I get all the time. I'm shocked that that can even exist as a viable business. I know, right? Like, <laughs> the business isn't big enough to start with. The amount of companies that are actually invoicing anyone is getting increasingly smaller. Like, we are an outlier of an outlier at Relay FM. Yeah. It's like a podcast network that sells its own ads. Like, that just doesn't really exist that much anymore like there are a few knocking around but most of them just join these larger platforms it's not even networks anymore you just join this platform that is like an ad marketplace or you use some kind of advertising agency to sell on your behalf like that's the way things tend to be done these days yeah the consolidation in this whole market has been enormous and it's it's, like when i'm thinking of how many companies are still in existence that work the way relay does it's like it's got to be less than five in the world. So, so who is this invoice finance company like, going for? What that tells for? me is this is like one person or something, right? <laughs> like, and they're like, I've got a great idea. But like, this is the like, and then maybe another 25% are like mailing lists of things that I do care about, but they're for me. So it's like, maybe they're like Patreon emails, you know, like things that I've signed up for. Yeah. Then I'll get some like, receipt type emails or whatever and then the rest Mm -hmm. is like work email right like the actual work email that i want which is like companies that are that i have relationships with that need things from me or companies reaching out to do sales stuff which not always but still a lot of time comes to me and then i give it to carrie to take on just because of the way Mm -hmm. that our email accounts are set up or whatever and just because my email address just is in the world somehow like without me ever wanting it to be but i can't get right. away from it but like there is no the, the thing that is making me so upset about this at the moment is i have had to come to terms with the fact that it is impossible for me to escape this yeah email is so fundamentally broken but there is no way out of it mm-hmm. because i could do what you do which is not look anymore but the problem is well that's not how my company runs. <laughs> yeah, and I could talk about that in a minute. But yeah, that like your business in particular can't work that way. It's just the amount of like crap that I get. Because if you removed the PR pitches and sales pitches, I'd be fine with what I get. Mm-hmm. And I use like email filtering tools, but I still have to check through the email because a lot of email filtering tools collect up these PR pitches along with like, sales pitches that i do want Mm -hmm. right or it's like hey we have a company and we want to get our brand in front of your podcast listeners right can you send us your sales deck right like i still want those emails yeah so like i don't really it feels like i can't get away from this because even if i was to filter them out of my inbox i still then have to go and look at them yeah so while you're talking i i'm having my own email battle right now i op- i just opened up my email just to have it open so i could describe like what i'm trying to do and while i opened it like you still just have straight up errors so like i'm trying to use a bunch of filtering as well on on yeah. my system and it works reasonably well but just straight away when i clicked on the folder of probable junk right at the top were two critical invoices yeah. that I have to pay. Yeah, I have to check my spam <laughs> folder all the time for this kind of stuff. Right. And it's like, last yeah. month, I dealt with this email. Why is it in my spam now? Like, why is this happening? And so these two invoices I have in various systems marked these things as not spam probably six times over the last year and it's like why is it still getting caught up in the system so like i i am with you here of like even with the best system the way email works you still can't really ever trust it enough that you can go like "Ah, i'm just not gonna look in that junk folder because there can be legit critical problems Uh and also that what can end up in there is just People who have never contacted you before, but who you want to get their message. Like that's yeah. way more likely to get snagged in some filter for some weird reason. Yep. So yeah, I get it. Like it's super frustrating. Because like I use a tool called Sanebox. They've been a sponsor mm-hmm. of the podcast in the past, but I've paid for their product for years. And they have like they I like one of the things they like is like, are you in a sales role? If you are, you should set it up this way. 
where it's oh, like interesting. the least aggressive of this type mm-hmm. of filtering. But I think it's called their sane later thing. Where and and you know you can do some manual training, which I've done, and it works fine. And blah blah blah. Because that was my concern when I was initially setting it up. It's like, am I going to start missing stuff now? It's like, well, they know exactly. that you know there there might be other things. Like I have it pull out newsletters, and I'm able to set up some of my own filtering with it. But I can't do their best filtering mm-hmm. because of the type of job I have. Mm-hmm. Right, because they're. I think at a fundamental level, like th- what the, a lot of these services do, is like if somebody's contacted you for the first time, it just goes into a bucket, and you can just mm-hmm. go in there when you want it. And for a lot of people, that's like great, like that will work, but that just can't work for me because mm-hmm. the first time someone contacts me could be important and could have a kind of its benefit to my company could diminish every day that I don't deal with it. Exactly, yeah. It kind of doesn't really matter about notifications or whatever. Like, this isn't the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, I can turn all my notifications off, whatever. It's still email. I still have to go to the email, right? Like, the problem isn't isn't like the email when it comes in. It's like when I open my email inbox and there's just all this just crap in there. Mm -hmm. The thing that is so annoying to me is it's like, this is such low effort. I don't know who (laughs) is going along with these things. Who is got who ever says, yeah, okay. <laughs> right, like well, another one that we get that I get a lot is like, I would like to publish an article on your website. Uh-huh. Who ever yeah. says yes to this? I, d- I don't know who it is that says yes. So one of the other things is I have been, I have had a long history of being real bad with email. But there are a few things that I may want to do over the next few years, which would require me to be much better at managing email for contacting people reasons. And so one of the things I spent my time flying across the world doing was like, okay, great. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to clear as much email as I can, which ended up being just like thousands of messages because it's the same. I have the same problem that you do of like, It seems like in the last two years, somehow my email has ended up on just a hundred million lists. Mm -hmm. And I think quite literally, I may have deleted, let's say, 200 emails alone on my flight, which were a variation on, I would love to put an article on your website, which again, is like, I'm so happy you Oh my God. (laughs) Right. There's, they're completely baffling. All of this was exacerbated for me this morning when, Mm -hmm. as I was leaving the house, I got an email for you. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) You're not the only person that I get these emails for, right? Yeah, but still, it's frustrating. But like, and so it's just like funny to me where it's like, we would like you to publish your videos on our platform, CGP Grey. And it's like, the email is my at mikehurley.net email address. Like, it's not even the one associated with Cortex, right? Like, I would accept it if it was that one, right? Like, the one that is, like, publicly in Apple's podcast database. But it wasn't. Mm -hmm. This person had to go to my website Mm -hmm. to get that email (laughs) address and they didn't even address it to me. It's like, I don't even understand how this has happened. (laughs) I'm so so sorry. (laughs) But like, look, you don't need to because like that was one of the 25 emails today that I got that was some version of this nonsense. This one just so happened to be addressed to you. Right. Because like with our podcasts, by and large, we like just submit them all under a Relay FM email address, right? Mm -hmm. so all of our podcast hosts at relay fm they get shielded from this nonsense Mm -hmm. because we receive these terrible emails that they don't want on their behalf right where they address them to the host hey like so and so we would love to put billy bob on your show billy bob as the ceo of big mind incorporated like just all this (laughs) nonsense that we get all Uh day right like which no one ever wants anything to deal with now, it, it's a frustrating problem. And what I'm trying to do is through a, a variety of smart mailboxes and filters is divide it all up into four categories. So I've got like VIPs, people that I've marked explicitly as VIPs in my contact address. Then there's everyone who's a contact of some kind. There's what I'm calling for now non-tax, which is like, these aren't my contacts, but these are 
automated messages from places that I care about. So it's like Amazon receipts and PayPal notifications and stuff. And then at the bottom, junk. So in theory, I should be working from like VIPs to contacts to non-tacks to the junk Mm -hmm. and clear the boxes in that order. But even there, it's super frustrating because it's like, oh, I want invoices from PayPal to show up in the VIP category. But there's no, and I suspect a lot of companies do this on purpose where there's no good way to try to filter it so that you only get some of their messages there it's like oh i can either get everything from paypal or most of the things from paypal showing up like on my top level thing which 90 percent of it i don't care about or i can have it all go into the non-tax folder but then i'm missing the important thing like this is the frustration is like you just can't get it to work the way you want to and you have to check all of them including the junk and yeah i was really quite shocked to realize just how much the actual volume of email has increased over the past two years it's like oh my god what a nightmare to deal with all of this the reason it sticks around and the thing that i am still grateful for is it is the only sort of open platform where there is a way to just try to reach people without having to sign up for like a million different services Mm -hmm. but boy does it feel like it's really approaching a tragedy of the commons problem to actually get things done in here so the barrier to entry is too low though right yes if you imagine this like scale of like your home address phone Mm -hmm. number or whatever your email address it's just too easy yeah to send stuff to people or to find that email address or whatever you know like the fact that I need to give an email address in certain circumstances and then that email Mm -hmm. address can just be taken and sold. You know, I think that we are in the same issue here also of like our email address is on mailing list that are sold. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's that has totally happened. That's why we get so many of these emails that are like, I want to publish this link on your blog or this person would be great to come and talk to your audience about the thing that has absolutely nothing to do with anything that anyone cares about, you know? Yeah. I almost feel sorry for the people that have to do these podcast interviews. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like they surely don't even want to do them. It's, yeah, it's it's a it's, it's a strange world, all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, you know, if my email is anything to go by, it's like podcast interviews are 95% of the global economy, I guess. Like, I, don't <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's happening anymore. <laughs> Also, I have the terrible suspicion of I just don't believe any of the unsubscribe links anymore. Like, I'm fairly certain that clicking on those please unsubscribe me lists, that's got to be like 50% of the time it works. But 50% of the time it can just confirms that this email has a person behind it. I worry about this too. Now just sells the address on further. The only time I ever click them is if I feel like or I can see that where I'm going is to the unsubscribe page of a major email platform. So like a, a MailChimp or a campaign monitor or whatever, because I'm confident that's going to work. And my mm-hmm. personal favorite thing about MailChimp is I can say, I never signed up for this. Yes. Yeah, because I know if nice. someone gets enough of them, it can put them into MailChimp jail, basically. Like, yeah. I know that they pay attention to that kind of stuff. Yeah, I got into MailChimp jail from a single person clicking that link once where it was like, oh, really? we got a report that someone said they didn't sign up for your mailing list. Well, you should stop buying one of those email addresses, Gray. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I was like, whoa, <laughs> that's very aggressive there, MailChimp. But yeah. um, that's a good metric to have, though. If it's one of the major mail providers, that then I can actually believe the unsubscribe link. Sometimes you can tell just by the way the email looks, which is helpful. Sometimes you can see where the link's going to take you. But yeah, yeah, I feel that too. If, if it's like some random thing, it's like, if I click this, they know I'm there now. Yeah, it really feels like cutting off the head of a Hydra every time you click one of those unsubscribe links. <laughs> like, <"Ugh." laughs> I had this thing the other day that I clicked one of these because I was getting emails from this company every day. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it could take up to seven days. It's like, why? Why would it take <laughs> seven days? To get rid of this, like, what do you do? Is someone manually checking this? Like, Mm -hmm. why will it take a week to remove me from this email (laughs) list? I suspect the reason for that is they are operating in a jurisdiction where that is the law. 
like you must remove it within X amount of time. And so what they're really just doing is saying we have seven more days to mail you pitches. That's what that like. That's my suspicion is. I actually think I might know the real one. As you said that, I remember from back in my old days, Mm -hmm. depending on how the information is shared and who's sending the emails, there may be a lag in that information getting from one place to the other. When I used to work in the bank, because it was bank information, you couldn't just have it freely shared between the bank and the company that sent the emails Mm -hmm. because it was like a whole other company that sent the emails. Hmm. So that okay. information would feed from one place to the next and it would be collected up in the next round of email addresses that would be sent out to the company to send them to. Hmm. Does that make sense? So like you would say, I don't yeah, want to do yeah. this. And the place that takes note of that is not actually the same place that presses send on the email newsletter list. Hmm. It's like you've got to wait. There's like a delay between point A and point B of, oh, this is what the list is now. Hmm. I will say it's bullshit that that exists because that's that's <laughs> like too many old systems being strung together. But that might be in some cases why that kind of thing does happen. But it's stupid that so many large companies use such terribly old technology. You know? Yeah, I mean, I mean God, like email was invented in the sixties or seventies. I don't know. Like it is, it is in. Old tech, and that sounds like old tech built on top of older tech. But mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. Like again, I I find myself back on the wheel of email again after basically ignoring all of my email for two years, and it has been dismal getting mm. back into this. Be like, okay, I, I need to actually manage this. I, I need to deal with the horrific guilt of an email from an important person from two years ago, and it's like, oh. It feels so awful. Are you still using mail? I am still using mail. Yeah, that's what I'm still using. I'd like to make a recommendation for you. Okay. I don't know if you just use Gmail. If you do use Gmail, I recommend an app called MimeStream. Oh, we spoke about it in State of the Apps. If you haven't yeah, looked yeah, at it, yeah. look at MimeStream. It's awesome. But it can it can do non-Gmail stuff? That's the problem. I've got a bunch of accounts oh. that are not Gmail. Right now, it's just Gmail. I think that yeah. they are going to work on that. And when they do, it's what I will probably move to on my Mac for a lot of stuff. But I still use Spark. You know, I just figured we should just update people because we just spoke about email, like <laughs> rambled about email for 20 minutes. I feel like <laughs> it's just Stu's and Spark still love their team sharing features. Like they've got me forever uh, with yeah. that because it's so good for what I do, especially when like all those emails that I mentioned earlier, like the sales ones that come in that I do want us to actually engage in, I don't deal with them. I then hand them over right, to right. Carrie and she deals with them and I use Spark to like filter that through. Like it came into my email address but I can move it over to her email address. Now I've thought, yeah. like, should we like decouple it and then have just like a sales relay and fam address? But it's even then, I'm still going to want to see it. So like, whatever, like just might as well just keep it as it is. Yeah, this is also the problem where you try to make separate email addresses to have filtering, but then they all end up in the same email program again. And yeah, and it's just like, oh, I've accomplished nothing. This is where I end up with. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I could make things really much more difficult for myself for a while for uh-huh. no result. Like there will be no good result for me. Like looking at my email accounts, I have like 10 different accounts that my program is checking. And many of these, I'm looking at them and I know it's like, oh yes, that's when I thought I would start over and have just this email that I would give to, oh, this one's the just for companies email. And this one is just for people. And it's like, nope, I solved nothing except making my system more annoying and more complicated. I have seven email accounts. Yeah. (laughs) What a fool. 